All right. Okay, so let's start. Good now. Okay, good, 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 good. All right. Technical difficulties, I guess, is what we call these. All right. All right, guys. Welcome to the seventh, <laughs> I think, Epic Seven podcast. Thank you guys for joining us. Today, we have Code, Tiber, and Pantry with us on this. And I'll have them each introduce themselves one at a time, starting with Code, then Tiber, then Pantry. So start us off, Code. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm um, Code. I'm uh, like, you know, I sort of wailed on E7 a bit. And now I'm wailing on Arknights 2 for fun. <laughs> just, just a bit, yeah, yeah. Uh, most of my streams are just farming streams to farm for gear. So I'm pretty sure you already know me from the... Um, the SSS summons on Jagan videos. <laughs> and I don't know what else to say. Besides the fact that I'm st it's 4 a.m. And um, I'm really tired, sort of. <clears throat> oh. All right. Thank you. All right, Tiber. All right, cool. Hey, guys, I'm Tiber. Did you know that life is recruiting? No meme this time. Like, life is actually recruiting. We're looking for two spots. Um, join our <laughs> Discord. Um, like, it is available if you go to the guild page, and that'll be the banner. And you can also look at um, our individual officer, like, greetings on our profiles. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the voice doesn't lie. We got this. Um, but, yeah, life is recruiting. Hi, I'm Pan Chewy. I'm an E7 streamer, and I like to mold a lot. I'm very tired. <laughs> Great. And I'm a caffeine addict. That's it. <laughs> and, uh, oh, thank you. And um, <laughs> I'm X Sky King, guys, for the people that don't know me, Epic 7 streamer. Twitch. All right. Thank you for the intros. And uh, let's get started with today's podcast. First topic I hear. Um, a lot of it's going to be focused more specifically on World Arena this week. So this one is, first topic, thoughts on current RTA drafting system. Um, what do you feel about it? What are your thoughts about how, you know, how, the way everything is drafted with the picks and bans? Please add a pre-ban. Please add a pre-ban. <laughs> okay. I've definitely heard that one. Amen to that. So um, Summoner's War is where Epic 7 got a lot of their motivation for the entire game, but also RTA. Um, and the concept of a pre-ban to explain, um, there are two ban phases. In the very beginning, both players have access to the entire monster Pokedex. And each of you can pick one unit that the other one doesn't know. Um, so like if someone like you know, oh, this person has a really good Bizarre, really fast Bizarre, or a really good Arbiter Vildred, you can preemptively ban that. So you save another ban spot for when you actually have drafted your team. Uh, and I agree, I think it's very, very needed. I think one of the biggest worries about that for me is Epic 7 compared to Summoner's War right now, if they add in pre-bans, because the major population doesn't have, like the game itself and the population doesn't have a lot of readily available built geared units to be used i'm worried a pre-ban mm -hmm. will limit the pool and pretty much set the meta to like well the meta's already set to like specific units but it's going to even dilute that even more when one single unit is being targeted from a pre-ban and then you also have like the are, are we adding like pre-ban and post-ban like two bands or is it um yeah that's what it used to be um again like i think eska mentioned that was for tournament style bands mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So that's my biggest worry, I think. But I can definitely starting to play more RTA, like play more of it. It's like I feel like it. It would be nice to have it, but I have a bit of a concern regarding that itself. Yeah, for me, I think my biggest gripe with the current system uh, isn't anything with the theory behind it. It's the mechanical, like how smooth is it. Um, because even right now, like hovering characters, uh, when you get your next turn to pick, if you are already hovered on that hero, at least in my experience, you have to move away from it and then go back. Um, and then like 
sometimes you'll accidentally draft um, your, whatever your first hero in your uh, box is. Mm -hmm. it, it's like basically just like, it's, it's like leaking your, your units away to your opponent sometimes mm -hmm. when you're like picking let's say you're picking like a dark unit and you're like drafting uh fcc sometimes the hovers over rv you let the opponent know that you have rv so it's like all the other stuff really happens mm -hmm. yeah yeah 100 percent agreed yeah i think like showing a unit is cool like for the the bat picks and bands there but like the way i yeah, i think like i agree like it, they could probably optimize the ui a bit to make it um a little bit more, I guess. That we're, we're concrete, no stable, no uh, smooth, I guess, in a sense, or just fix and bands. Uh, what your what else, any other thoughts for uh, the RTA drafting system code aside from that? Well, let me think. Um, honestly, I'm not sure. I'm just kind of tired of playing to the playing against the same. Yeah team comps over and over and over again yeah yeah because it's like That's very fair. my first two picks will always either be ssv or arbiter Vildred, right or else True. if i don't pick those the enemy has two of those and yeah. i can't win yeah. with two of those right so it's yeah. like the same draft over and over and sometimes the win is just an rng coin flip yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. all right so let, let's actually move on to that topic there since uh seems like that one's done so since we're talking about it, let's talk about the top meta units. Thoughts? Yeah. So first of all, Whoa. let's let's hear. Right. What are your thoughts on which ones are your top meta units? Do you think? Oh yeah, I definitely have this. So I mean, if I put it like this, right? SSB is a unit that punishes you if you hit anyone on her team. Charles is a unit that punishes you if you hit anyone on his team. Arbiter Virtuous is a unit that punishes you if you kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really fun to play against, right? Sensing a theme here. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's actually so true, though. It's extremely accurate. mechanics. Oh god, hundred percent. So, like, and they're the meta picks for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Other things like aside from those that I would see, I would probably talk about um, FCC, Niravi, um, Elots Bazaar, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I think the cleave variations, uh, provoke variations, pro the provoke knights. Mm -hmm. uh, there's basically just all that. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, I think I don't know. Like personally, for me, like playing RT, I feel like so in the beginning, I feel like we saw a lot of like May Chloe's, Ruels, a lot more of the revivers, like May Chloe specifically. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. I think because of that, like the SARS. Are a lot more popular because of the May Chloe DNs kind of coming out. So I feel like, personally for me at least, I find Bassar a really strong unit. If you have a well built Bassar, he'll like he'll unbuffable you, push your team back. Um, of course. And also the 50 50 play where he can just stun your Lilius. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> oh. yeah that's a, that's a yank. Man, I swear, 90% think... of the time he doesn't miss on my Lilius. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, just, I don't know. It's like... just that mage has way too strong artifact. The soul artifact, mm -hmm. tiger health, something, soul, or whatever it is, and um, the abyssal crown, right? Abyssal crown can just win you a match on its own. Yeah, it's so stupid. I remember uh, <laughs> we talked about that. How we we were worried about tiger health's mm -hmm. book being available. So I feel like Epic Seven is they're really trying to like not have to remove artifacts, and instead they want to. Add in the new units because you know we have Assassin Sid now getting ML Tywin. It's so, like they're trying to like so remove true. book without removing book. And I don't know if like going about a roundabout way there is gonna, I, I don't know how big an impact that's gonna be until we see ML Tywin. And we'll talk about well, it. I mean, for, me, for me, going back to the book thing, and for mm -hmm. those that weren't here in the past, like that was something we've been talking about in every instance previously back in summer when. Epic Seven Smilegate announced all these big changes, and Paul was meeting with people. We had like a big top guild powwow, um, and so many of us from all of these different guilds were extremely concerned about Book's existence. And while Assassin Sid is great and he's very fast, right, second highest base speed in the game, I think, right behind Kaylon. Yeah, am I if I'm right? 
Tied or... with Aiko? I think so. No, no, no he's not one third. He's like one he's third. Like one, one speed down. One yeah. speed down? I think no. He's 126. Assassin's Creed like... and Assassin Cole has the same speed, I think. Yeah, 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 sure yeah one, one, But Assassin's Creed has like 35% base quit chance. Yeah, the yeah. Yeah. chance. Assassin's Creed's nuts. <laughs> I think both 126 and K-Ron's 129. Yeah, K-Ron's the only one that's 129. Um, yep. But yeah, <laughs> um, like, while that's amazing, I, I feel personally, whenever I see Assassin Sids, people don't really want to gimp his damage. Sort mm -hmm. of similar to the Assassin Coley thing. Yeah. I'm um, sure you can make a lightning fast Assassin Coley, but then you cripple her um, for everything else she needs to do. And the best book holders, well, the only characters that can hold book are mages. And those mages that benefit from them in those team comps are built as the fastest units, right? Yeah. If we're talking about Oxlots, if we're talking about Bissar. So in my mind, having these counters for souls when the entire benefit is getting souls for turn one, mm -hmm. I don't think they're properly implemented as counters, you know? I think the other part is because the mages don't care about damage, all you need to focus on is mainly on speed. And if we look at Bastar mm -hmm. with his soul burn, all you care about is speed. So it's a lot easier for them to gear these units up as first turn mm -hmm. speed unit if you have, you know, comparing similar equivalent gear, you have more flexibility to give them just your best speed gear and you're, you're, you have a good chance to outspeed them. Exactly. And like another thing, like I know this is more like catered towards RTA, but as players in any game in general, um, a big focus is put on ease of use mm -hmm. and how often and where you can use those units. Yeah. So if we look at Oxlots and Bassar, you'll give them your fastest gear because you'll use Oxlots literally everywhere in competitive in this game. Oxlots is busted. Yeah. Um, Bassar, you can use him on guild, uh, arena defense. Some people use him on guild war defense um, to varying success. Um, and, and at least in the past, anyway. Um, but Assassin Sid, like, since he's so niche as a unit, mm -hmm. um, you won't be investing in him. And if you don't go full balls to the walls, I'm going to outspeed you, then he's a good follow up damage dealer for a cleave comp. But he doesn't counter book the way I think Smilegate wanted him to. Yeah. So I I'm a little bit curious. We'll talk about that after your thoughts. That's one of the topics. But I'm curious how ML Tywin may or may not affect or more of these kind of units may affect that. So. Mm -hmm. um, uh, all right. Other top meta units there. All right. So other top meta units. Um, I mean, Seaside Bologna, Fallen Cecilia. Arbiter Vildred, like, do you think there's, like, any... Do you think these are, like, gonna stay top units for a long time at this point? Like, are people gonna build new units that might counter these things a lot? Like, I mean, if Smartgate keeps doing what they're doing, they're trying to sell us answers for the meta, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. One day they'll actually sell us a good counter. <clears throat> but, they, yeah. They, they sell it off as a good counter, but it ends up coming off so niche. I mean, we basically saw that example with, like, Alencia. We needed, like, a shipper, you know, a new defense break, like, a yeah. new defense buffer. Vanessa, there, the next thing you know, it's like, her kit doesn't really function as well as we thought it would, or what they told us that it would be doing. And then when we looked at it, it's like, oh, make Chloe so strong, and, like, all the other stuff that's going on. And then they literally just give us a unit that it just doesn't work. It's it's kind of disappointing. I feel like there's been like this like same trend of where they keep on giving us new units that somehow tries to fix the meta, but because they're so niche, they don't really fit in very well in general use. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think like it's sort of like a reactionary approach because they yeah. were on the exact opposite end of that spectrum um like last year right mm -hmm. like when they started dogpiling us with mlara then ml ball then Dizzy, yeah. synergizing all of these new things to where at that time the market and their game plan was we're gonna make these work so well together that they have to buy them right mm 
yep. uh, to stay competitive. And I think because of all of the outcry that happened over summer, yeah. Smilegate may have gone too far in the other direction. You know what I mean? A bit of a, like a knee-jerk reaction. They're very cautious right now. Yeah. 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 A lot yeah. of the they're units... very, very cautious right now. Yeah. I definitely, I definitely feel that way too. Like they're, it, it's like they're trying to keep everything, you know, trying to make it not as strong. And then if necessary, when a balance comes in, they can then start tweaking them there rather than releasing them like straight up like ML Ball and ML Araminfa being such top strong units when they first initially was released. True, true. And like the buffs themselves, I feel, have also been a bit more tepid, you know? Like mm -hmm. if we're looking back to Fire Corvus, yeah. um, which I think at the time, I think Fire Corvus was the best thing that happened to the game because it gave everyone the motivation to farm up and raise this very accessible and free-to-play friendly unit that changed the meta, it got people going, it got people theory crafting new defenses that couldn't be cheesed. It was good for the competitive environment, although he was toxic, right? <laughs> Arbiter Vildred, he got buffed and he changed everything, right? Yeah. Arbiter Vildred literally destroyed so many souls. Like, I, I'm not, I know, right, guys? Like, I'm happy he was nerfed. He, I'm not saying it was healthy, I'm saying it was fun. Um, healthy for our mindsets, you know? Like, because of all of that, I feel like a lot of the buffs have been sort of eh, yeah. you know? Like, the um, Water Kisei one, have you guys tested, played around with her? I have. At all? Yeah? Yeah, fully invested, triple S, uh, <laughs> Molagora, Max S1, Max S3, tested in RTA. I, I uh, heard about that. <laughs> how is it how is it does it uh so the variation that i built was like the speed is basically i just gave all my eight coley's gear over to kisei and mm -hmm. i dropped her on alexa's basket uh even with greater attack buff or barrier so she received the buff with her s3 where she now receives a barrier uh but the barrier really isn't anything like it doesn't protect her from ssb it doesn't protect her literally from any aoe it doesn't protect we were assuming that it would protect her from like any of the major aoe's yeah. that you know we were hoping that she would stop but that didn't happen everything just literally she just keep on getting popped she feels very useful yeah uh i think it's probably so that single target units are very very hard to use in rta just because then if you really think about it uh, looking back, if we look, if we think about like all the meta units currently, RB, SSB. Uh, sometimes people use Charles. Sometimes people have like ways to like literally knock you out of stealth. It's pretty difficult to use too. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sure. Oh. Um, as far yeah, and like in sort of tying that back to the current topic, um, the buff to A Ravi I think was phenomenal. Like. Mm -hmm. oh. like I don't know, I'll admit a bit, I feel like I don't know if she needed the skill 3 buff. I feel like the passive yeah. would have made her already more viable enough as it is. Because before that, crit rate. yeah, like, raise the crit rate, her gear requirement goes down a bit. Giving, giving a unit a skill nullifier along with getting the turn right away is enabling a lot of other units, essentially. So I feel like the passive might have been enough for her to be a threat already. I feel like she was already a threat as is with her damage once you've invested and you have good gear on her. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like, when, when ARV was released and we see the nerf stats, like, they shadow nerf um, ARV several times. They yeah. did say their reasoning was because of they're afraid of her in RTA. Yeah. But then the mm -hmm. community still asked for her buff. Yeah. And, and uh, now they're complaining. Like, look like, where we are. Like, <laughs> Dude, if they didn't shadow nerf her, can you imagine how much damage? Like in RTA, like Frenzy two or Frenzy three, she's gonna one shot someone. I'll, I'll like, yep. I'm just like, what? So I mean, I think that that was actually like not bad. A Ravi was possibly just a little bit overbuffed with her new buff there. I. Well, I, I want to go back because now I see Sean saying, like, A. Ravi isn't OP for RTA. But mm -hmm. I, I'm going to say this as well. Although you guys are in the, you know, 
you guys are saying that she's like overbuff. I actually think that she's fine right now. You think so? Okay. Uh, though the biggest reason why I'm saying that is because most of the time I'm still sticking around with like the crazy meta teams and mm -hmm. like all the other stuff. But I feel like mm -hmm. there's enough like ways that you can play around her. Like mm -hmm. like I said, you know, you guys are thinking a lot about like you know all the top meta picks, SSB, RB, like oh they're also squishy but then what happens to like the bruiser teams like, what happened if you look at like uh the ways that you can be beating her like falcon or clary you could provoke lock her using lilius yeah you could try to use her with like you know use fcc and that's why people start putting crimson seed on her mm -hmm. i mean in one way or another um i find that it's very hard for me to use a robbie at all like she's very good in certain situations like against a team that has zero sustain mm -hmm. or uh, some sort or like have like very poor sustain mm -hmm. or just ones where they're just like you know if they're too tanky i wouldn't be able to like beat them at all like the moment oh, they start there. bringing like it, it, it'll be so hard like let, let's say for example if the enemy just ends up bringing like from where i am where i'm placing rta most people would end up picking like Rowell and all the other stuff. Would you still bring in a Robbie, right? Mm -hmm. Like depending on your team, like I never, like every single time I tried to find like a general use for her, I couldn't because then people would have some way to actually deal with her. Like eventually it's either she can't out heal them mm -hmm. or she just never counters or, you know, she's just not good for the situation. Mm -hmm. That's true though. No, I, I agree. Like, well, when I I do agree with that actually, because if, if I think back about certain RTA matches, um, people who actually well I, I've I've ever built now now, but people who have good Falcon or Clarice can mm -hmm. or even like a Fallen Cecilia, which not as accessible, but like the provoke and stuff is pretty annoying and can kind of screw over A Robbie quite a bit, and like if your team rotates kind of fast, A Robbie is not usually built that fast she could be on a speed set mm -hmm. but then you're gonna get screwed over a little bit in certain cases mm -hmm. so I, I do see I, I do see what you mean for sure there in that yeah. situation yeah mm -hmm. um can we throw back I to mean, pre nerf glory I just pick a Robbie you just for me that's like a free a Robbie pick <clears throat> when uh when someone picks like Falcon or glory or what do you mean no like when they pick mate glory because yeah, make glory, make the glory. reason yeah when you make, make, make glory it's just so fun to play a robbie too mm -hmm. <clears throat> i agree i generally it's kind of funny i don't pick make chloe nearly as much now like but I, I do happen to see myself picking a robbie a lot more against that but with hey, let's go go both ways mm -hmm. okay so top meta pick units a little bit more general people on all of that. Let's move on to one other one. So this one's going to be what units do you think are underappreciated in RTA? Underappreciated. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of people talk about Falcon or Cleary, but I feel like not a lot of people actually have her built up and use her. So obviously I'm going to put her in one. And then, yeah, yeah Sean, Sean says green Purgus. Okay. I, I agree. <laughs> counter cleaving for counter cleaving most of and yeah, I, I agree. Green Purgus is a really good unit against Cleave teams for sure. Azaria, I think. Azaria is this... like one of those units where you will be picking her up a lot, but most of the time she can never be played because she gets banned. Yep. <laughs> but I, I, yep. I, I she find that a happen a lot. It, 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 yeah, it's like a force ban. It's like when you see it's it's like seeing like a Basar or any of those top meta picks. It's like, oh no. That's that's a ban. You don't want you don't want Asiria to be there because then she might be like popping something off and gonna be it's gonna be pretty scary. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she never really, I never really see her in the match, but she's always banned, right? She always takes away a ban mm -hmm. slot, so it's kind of disgusting. Because mm -hmm. she's such a good enabler, right? Yeah. Yep. I mean, other unappreciated picks. I've seen the uh, what's it again? Well, the artifact where you do an extra S1 after oh. you do a single attack. The Sword of Judgment? And it was a DPS area or something, because it oh, actually killed my Harvard's Abusion. What? <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Wait, does it work with a Soul Burn? Uh, I'm not sure if it's worked with a Soul Burn. 
I I've never seen it work with a soul burn, but the S3 into S1 can just kill an RB. That's that's which is so stupid. That's the Lydica artifact, right? The Sword of Judgment one you're talking sword about. Sword of Judgment, yeah. I think so. Yeah, the Sword of Judgment. Yeah, because usually RB RB is pretty trash if enemy has a uh, DA, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they don't really. You can't really ban DA because there's probably another pick over their team that you have to ban. Oh, mm-hmm. that's interesting. I never thought about using Asaria that way. Yeah, that's really interesting. Was it late Frenzy, or was it like... That when was like did Frenzy Asaria... 2 or something. Okay. Oh, that was really early still. Yeah. Huh, okay. Huh. That, that, that's a little surprising. I, 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 need a... yeah, I think it's because Asaria S3 is a 1.6 attack ratio or something. It's one. Her S3 oh, is two. One? So her S1 is one, Soulburn is two for her S1. And her S3 is a two on attack rate. Oh. She has very high single target. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. I think why. she has probably one of the best stats for like a single target offense unit. Uh, she is a Rager Leo. So like, she literally has like, amazing HP. She has boosted crit. She has high attack. So she has like all the stats that you really want her to have really mm-hmm. uh utility wise though in most general cases people are using like tamas area and like pvp but i don't think like other than me using it right now uh mm-hmm. she isn't really built for utility because then she doesn't have any effectiveness on her awakening <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's but other too. than that as an offense unit everybody just keeps on thinking that she's more of utility instead so which they're not too wrong. She could be mixed. I think one of the things is uh, not a lot of people are using this. I, I know I know Code, you have one built up. And you use her quite a bit. But I feel like Akadis, I feel like she's a pretty good unit. But not, mm-hmm. like, a, not like a first pick kind of unit. But like it, it's a good counter pick unit for quite a few teams considering how there's like Basar, Charles, and like Alencia that people like to pick sometimes. Well, I mean, the thing a revive healer and she doesn't have an attack buff that's why she sees less use because the only thing that she provides is healing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's cool but mainly i still use her in guild war because i don't really feel like i should pick her over the other soul weavers that are mm-hmm. meta yeah i think the offensive soul weavers are very strong, right? yep. like, like they, had to, they had to be giving you like some sort of like attack buff in some sort of way so that you can apply kill pressure maybe uh, like you would use that. like maybe if you're using like the like dark corvus teams with the kds you might be able to like yeah possibly if you're running into like a stall team into like a bf9 team yeah. then for sure but i don't think i don't as of late i haven't seen too many fights been going all the way to bf9 i it, it happens very rarely i feel like yeah once you get to that point like Max HP is so low and stuff like that, and um, everything's like going like a lot of damage. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, yeah, healing gets bad at Battle Frenzy Nine. It's it's yeah. terrible. Like Agatha's would not be healing anything. She'll just like give you sprinkle a little bit, but it's not even like a hundred HP, mm-hmm. which isn't exactly very good. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. I don't I don't have one built up so. I I don't know how like I see a lot of people use her in like I've seen code user in Guild Wars I've seen people use her in like Arena and Guild Wars scenario so I feel like she could be a really good pick for RTA mm-hmm. but as I guess something where everyone's trying but the other thing is how many of you guys have seen Carrot being used Carrot I've seen, I've seen her a few times and like when I picked I drafted bad. The carrot nuked me, so I was a little surprised uh, about that. But I never seen her before. Really? Actually, no. I haven't Same. seen her a lot, but I've seen I, her I never it, seen her before. Actually, I think it's just up here. Been. It's like all I see is like meta picks, so I don't really know. Yeah. It could have been a misdraft, you know. Like I have, yeah. gra- I have drafted Gunther many, many times. No, no, no. This I guy, could. I remember they picked carrot for sure. Like, I, I didn't draft that well because I wasn't ready for it. But like, his team was kind of squishy, and then like. I wasn't ready for her, and then like Carrot like nuked my team. I was like, "What?" I was a little surprised about that. <laughs> Granted, I wasn't running like a full tanky team. It was like a mid squishy team. I remember correctly. Okay. I guess for next unappreciated unit, Emorin. 
No, 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 I've been using her really, really well, and she's been winning me match. You don't understand. Really? She, she, she does, she does so well. And it, it's like literally forcing bans. My MO red has been getting banned over and over and over every single time. It's like people be picking either Deanne, they, they take my Deanne, they either pick me, Chloe, I bring out MO red, and then it's just that. Uh, Okay. She is probably one of the most unappreciated picks. At least I'm the only person that's currently using her as of right now. But I've literally she basically, never seen her before. Yeah, but the thing, but but the thing about her is that she has immunity for her, her S3. She mm -hmm. forces like the enemy to play a very specific way, especially when they have buffers, right? Mm -hmm. Because then you know, like if ML Rin has the opportunity just to steal your buffs, the entire fight could turn the other way around, mm -hmm. like very quickly. And I, I guess it changes the mentality a lot. If, yeah, if, exactly. If I know, it, if I saw correctly, you're running a slower MO Rin now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. It's like a triple HP, so it's like a full tank MO Rin. Uh, she has high enough base speed just to be just on speed set and she'll be yeah. fine. Okay. It, it's like, I mean, the idea of like MO Rin is very similar to how people think about like when you're using like Clurry or like L Clurry versus Lilius or Lilius versus Clurry. Yeah. It's like controlling the enemy or like when you're like fighting your opponent, it's like, you know, when do you toss out your Falcon or Clary's S3? When does Lilius use her S3? It's very, it's, it's in that kind of manner. Uh, it's always like a counter pick. I find it to be pretty cool that I can actually use my own motor in that way. Yeah. So I find her to be under, underappreciated. Okay, that's interesting. I, I, yeah, like, I, I, the one thing is, well, I six-starred mine to test her in the past. But in Guild Wars Arena, she didn't really have... I didn't see much usage in her. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's interesting. Like, I, you know, I don't have molas, but it might be something worth thinking about in that situation. Then, I mean, you only need to, like, S3 cooldown her, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> From there, she just is used for, like, just being a situational yeah. unit the entire time. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just, like... Because then everybody always drafts, like, a buffer at some point. Yeah. Right? That's Almost why I guaranteed, it, yeah. Having the a unit that can control when they can buff. So it's more of like a mind game, is what you're saying. Like, yeah, it's they, a mind game. Kind you of have unit. that threat available on the field, mm -hmm. and because she's not super squishy and fast, mm -hmm. they can't kill her nuker right away. So they're always scared of when they're 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 gonna buff. Okay, that's yep. interesting. Uh, hey, code. Any other underappreciated units you've seen or you've thought about that you use? Violet. Violet? <laughs> Code loves his Violet, yep. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I know you've That's like a last Violet. pick, right? The fifth pick, like on the very last pick, if I pick a Violet, some players doesn't know how to do and how tanky he actually is because I built him 1k defense. So they kind of get spooked when I one-shot their rule or Apocalypse <laughs> Rabbit. <laughs> I feel like Violet has a very high gear requirement. Though, because you yeah, know, that's, 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 that's the thing, right? Like, <laughs> I tried switching him over to the lifesteal set, and he started to feel like he doesn't do any damage anymore. Yeah, I think this goes and for like any bruiser. I think though. some new players do have the wrong idea of oh, you should stack evasion with violet. Not really, you should stack other, t other forms of protection for him, like quit resist or a cleanse or something, rather than just stacking because his own evasion is good enough. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Okay. I, I've seen a few Violets here and there. Like, in the beginning of RTA, I've seen a lot more Violets come out. And then I feel like gradually I saw them wane down. Like, people are running, like, yeah. other units. And then I'll see a Violet here and there every so often. But and then again, also, to be honest, I don't think a lot of people have, like, their best gear on their Violets. So either they're, like... Because the, uh, I think some Asia players, mm -hmm. they now have Lilius, Sermia, and k -Rod. So I literally cannot pick Violet anymore, which is kind of yeah. feels bad. Oh. The, the k -Rod, <coughs> the k coming back, though. Oh, is, I love uh, it. I love the fact that k -Rod. Yeah, we all love he the Dust scary. Devil double crit on the blue unit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, clearly I'm just sadistic, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I, mean, I guess I'm not surprised being, like, dizzy not being in the game. You can ban SSB, like, mm -hmm. after that, like, a well-built k -Ron is, is such a good threat. Mm -hmm. Obviously, un until you run into certain matches where, for example, when my Charles didn't miss on k -Ron every single time, so I just kind of 
<laughs> Steamroll. I, 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 I don't know what happened. Like, I literally Steamroll. stripped every buff off the Kiran. I felt so bad for the guy. I was like, I like sacked him. The thing is, whenever pick, people pick Kiran, they will always bring him with, like, some sort of buffer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. what's funny about that is... Uh, oh, I don't just say... ML Rin last pick. Okay. Of course. Okay. <laughs> oh, I, okay. See. I see, I <laughs> see. This is the ML Rin last pick. As simple as that, I just gotta strip away his, his strip away everything. He has oh, you have attack buff? Oh, okay, never mind. Let me take that real quick. You have uh, <laughs> oh, um, immortality. I think I have one more on the appreciated pick. Hmm. Champion Zorato. His wings. I saw him a lot more recently. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like but... the the speed champion Zorato one with like really high damage, like 14k health and like 280 crit damage, some shit. I um, think Unlike we want to expect Champion Zerato to just, you know, proc water origins on your healers. It like, kind of kills is, your team, right? Like, what is this? Is this like a speed set? Yeah, it's a speed set. It's it's like 160 speed something, 40k health, and like a shitload of damage. Because mm -hmm. he has his self-imprint and his awakening, which already gives him more than enough effectiveness to debuff just about anything, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, and I, I feel poor for the EU player that doesn't have Layla Violin. <laughs> Because it just wins so much matches. I, I don't have a champion Zerato, so like I, I can't even. Wait, like, really? F. Don't 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 talk about it. I, I've, I I'm so <laughs> sad. I've wanted one for so long ever since like ever since they like changed them a bit and like oh you can solo A11 with it. Oh wow, wish I had one. That's <laughs> insane. That's insane. Too. Yeah, I, and like I agree with a lot of people in chat there. Like I think C Zerato himself has been common, and I think people intuitively sort of understood that he would be good in rta mm -hmm. i think it's more the build that you're talking about i think a lot that of people the more mm, surprising yeah i think a lot of people that we saw running them early on like i didn't really find them a big threat mainly because they didn't build them that well but then every time i've seen one now they seem to have been a lot some people have switched gears and builds and champions Row has been doing a lot more for the people who have good gear and like or switch their gears over to him I think I think a lot of people running him, a lot of them brought their like A11 solo champion Zerados into the <laughs> RTA fight yeah, or something, yeah. and then it's like, like oh, they thought it would work, right? But no, it's like a totally different build you would probably do for RTA. So okay, oh, yeah, Chris, yeah. It's like people yeah. are trying to make these counter units feel like um, like they want to make the counter units have life steal and thinking they if they stack life steal they'll make their unit invincible unkillable or something <laughs> yeah and it's not really worth it it's rather yourself alive what if you just kill the enemy team it's a lot easier that way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you already have a threat as in the counter so might as well get value elsewhere mm -hmm. exactly and like a lot of people have this issue of like this sort of gimmick trap like this thing, this cheese seems like it would work. And sometimes when you're playing against an AI, it will work, right? You will solo. Mm -hmm. But anytime you're playing against real people, I don't think, you know. It's uh, a different it's story when you're playing people. against real people. Ball to assume I'm better than an AI. Have you seen my drafts? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, right, right. But code, we've seen the gear though. So. Yeah, that's a yeah. different story. Yeah. Way oh. more than enough to compensate. Uh, someone in chat says Fire Ravi is an underappreciated unit. I don't know if Fire Ravi is underappreciated. I feel like I see enough. I actually see Fire Ravi being used mainly by like Asia and Korea players. Yeah. And a lot of them, I think, have pretty decently well built Ravis. That they're actually pretty good. I mean, then again, like the only reason why you would ever like pick a Ravi, like no, just like Ravi in general, Fire Ravi. I mean. Yeah, in general, it's probably just because then they literally have an entire lineup full of Earth units. But I find that to be like very rare. Most of the time, it literally is just like, at least for me, I don't intuitively insta pick Charles <laughs> mm -hmm. anymore. But even then, if you think about it, it's like if you think about like the other Earth units that people commonly pick. Yeah, I don't think Ravi is a is like a go to unit. I think. So I guess she's not like a, she's not like a first pick, right? So underappreciated, yeah. I feel like she's more of like a counter pick. Yeah. Like the one yeah. time I got countered by her, it was like I'm pretty sure it was a speed set, Ravi, I think, and with a Durandos, if I remember correctly. But she kept on, she kept, um, going really quickly. So she oh, okay. Then again, she also didn't miss on my DM. But 
she stunned my team quite often. It was, it was actually pretty annoying. It was, it was actually pretty surprising how useful she was in that situation. I didn't expect her to be that useful. Mm -hmm. So I feel like with the buff that they gave her a little while back, I feel like she's, she is a little underappreciated by maybe like, I would say global players a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Global players never really found her, even in the past, like that good. Like Asia, Korea servers, like those people, I feel like we're using her a little bit more, maybe. Yeah. I think over here, we were hyping up a little bit more in, like, during the early times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ravi, Ravi was some of our reroll choices. Yeah, when, when, the, game, when the game just came out. And yeah, yeah, yeah when Dilja falls off, right? Dilja, yeah, she fell <laughs> yeah. off. Then we entered the Ken meta, though, right? So, like, in competitive and Guild Wars, anytime you would look for a Fire Bruiser, the question was just, why not use Ken? Yeah. Or DPS, why not use Kara, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so any other underappreciated units that you guys can think of off the top of your head? Uh, you might have seen. Uh, like... Bring Dizzy to RTA. Oh please. God, no! Yes, please bring Dizzy, bring Viking, bring them. Oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. Dizzy, bring, uh, wait I'll take Viking. Okay, the only way to kill a meta is to bring in another meta. Come on. <laughs> Jeez. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh man, we can talk about this. How how that would change everything after, but all right. <laughs> it would change so much. Oh my Let's, God. Let's. Uh... Yeah. Oh yeah, love. Double Abyssal Crown Dizzy Bazaar feels good. <laughs> oh, like, what if they no, just no, no, stack no. five mages against you, right? Fire, um, <laughs> ML Araminta, Dizzy Bazaar, Oxlot something with like, I don't know, Abyssal Crown and stuff. How they don't, many, how many you don't, it doesn't matter how tanky you build. Dude, just go like ML Lyrica, A lots, Bazaar, literally full stun teams. Dude, oh, everyone, everyone's no, strip no, stun. No, no, oh, no. That's kind of like, uh, what's that combo oh, in Summoners were? Ganymede, oh, Hathor? This Ganymede, the... Hathor, Molong, um, and then maybe sometimes it'll like, be like... The, um, what's it again? Um, the light yeah, the... What's the name called? The Battle Frenzy? It goes up every time an entire team takes a turn. So if you can just perma-lock someone, right? Oh, you just go. You do damage, damage regardless. Yeah, you slowly do damage regardless. Yeah, uh, that, that, I don't know if I want to see. I, I'd be a little scared to see that actually. My mind was saying two sixty speed Etika scepter delivery because it can kill people, right? <laughs> That's know. true. Yeah. That's what, true. It doesn't matter you if can. it cleanse. I can just do it again. True. Oh man. True. Okay, well, we'll huh. <laughs> maybe we'll talk about how, you know, <laughs> what, what else we'll see. But, um, <clears throat> all right, let's, let's move on to the last topic for tonight. Um, is, it, it may or may not be a quick one. Um, essentially, we just want to talk about Emil Tywin here. Yeah, what do you guys think about his kit? Functionality in Guild Wars, RTA, Arena. All right, let's, let's just talk about how you guys... So two things, right? Obviously, I know people, certain people... Some people might not really think he's that good, um, which is fine. Um, what uses do you think you can, you guys see him being used in? How do you think he can be used? And if he does need a buff or rework, right, to like make him more viable, what do you think might be better for him in that situation? Um, so to like start, can we like, you know, categorize it by like, you know, different places, like starting with Guild Wars. Can okay. you guys think of a use for him? Because I can't. I can mm. code. Uh not really. Okay. Yeah. So so we're Don't, in agreement I mean, with that. It's a speed down. I, I like his S three D buff though. It's a speed I down on sure. Guild which is really nice. But the rest yeah. of it doesn't really hold up. Yeah, on um, Guild War defense, it provides absolutely nothing. Done and Guild War offense, like I don't know, it's it doesn't provide you enough. And there, if you're going for like that really safe route with you know damage mitigation from a knight you know like there's so many other things you could do mm -hmm. that guild war offense really isn't much of a problem anymore um i feel for yeah i feel like right scene. now guild war offense yeah i mean guild wars in general i feel like right now it's i feel like once someone goes in they know the stats like for yeah yeah it's like uh... the rest of your guild knows okay this is what you should do and then everyone kind yeah, of yeah yeah after the first attack like Everyone should win against everything in the. Or any of the top, like any of the top ten yeah. guilds, like that. If they one person scouts properly, and then the rest of the guild follows through, kind of thing. Talking about it. Yeah. But. All right. Well, arena. 
I find I feel like Arena he might have a little bit more use. To be fair, like I feel like in Arena, I don't think I'd use him on Arena offense because it I don't know. It seems a bit slow to mm-hmm. me. I feel like I mean on defense for pushing when you're pushing at reset time on the like the last hour, I feel mm-hmm. like he might help stall out a defense where he'll be annoying enough in that situation where yeah. people who's trying to like, you know, push for like the rankings might want to avoid him if you're running him with like typical annoying units now that people could run for stalls like Basar, Elena, Assassin Cartuja, those just trying to make you miss and not be able to kill the team or cleave the team essentially is what I feel like. But my only worry with that is that as you get towards this pure mitigation stuff, annoying, toxic things, Mm -hmm. um, at what points do you remove the existence of a threat on your defense so much so um, that it becomes very safe for them to do something else, right? Like mm. Ox Lots, Watch a Shuri, Asaria kind of thing, for example. Okay. It'll take maybe like, I don't know, an extra 45 seconds at most, which is an overestimate, you know? Like, yeah. I don't know. Okay. No, that, that, that's true. That's fair enough. That's true. Like, once you, once you remove, once you're like removing a lot of your team to like counter to like one specific thing, then you might leave yourself open to a lot more other things too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's true. Any thoughts about like, I was half ex- oh, sorry. I was half expecting ML Tywin to actually do damage because his kit seems really underwhelming, mm-hmm. but he actually doesn't do damage at all too. Yeah, it's like Alencia. It's basically like... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the ratios are oh, the same. Alencia wait, 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 wait. wait. They're, they're the kit, same right? thing. Okay, wait. Alencia, Alencia does... a good kit. Yeah, Alencia actually it's does amazing. decent damage. <laughs> no, no, no. Decent damage. Okay, but... Solera's Alencia d- does decent damage in my, but he has really high gear requirements. Bro, your RTA match against Solera, the only thing you killed was Alencia. Yeah, because I got screwed <laughs> over by it last time. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's PTSD. It happens. Yeah, it's PTSD too. It, it's like me with Blaze Dingo. Oh, speaking of underappreciated him. Please think. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna say that is true. Back on the topic. Big utility yes. that deals a big punch. Yeah. Especially as you slowly get in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. Well, that's that's Guild Wars and Arena. All right. RTA. Do you feel like he'll have any use in the current oh. kind of top meta underappreciated units? Kind of Oh, we play bruiser it. team. We don't really soul burn, right? Unless we play speed teams. Yeah, mm-hmm. we don't soul burn at all. Most of the time, but it's like if you first so pick, long. like if you first pick as a or arbiter budget, and they start stacking speed, uh, SSB and arbiter budget can like can transfer into a or into a bruiser team easily, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not really easy to pick ML Taiwan because you don't know what they're picking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So MLTI would probably be a last pick, mm-hmm. but there's actually a lot better last pick. Yeah, than MLTI on himself. I feel mm-hmm. like Elena is also a unit that kind of like does kind of does like a similar thing for you. Not oh, yeah. nearly, not not the same way where like her Taiwan has like Taiwan has that passive that procs right away, right? But then like Elena's skill kit, I feel like is really good as like a last pick against. Protect, like just like protecting your team and giving you that effect resist buff and stuff like that so i don't know mm-hmm. i that, that's my biggest worry is like i thought about we were talking about this before is you know, maybe you could pair ml time with elena but then you're running two really supportive units along with someone mentioned the fact that elena's skill three like her effect resist kind of screws over your ml tywin because like because <coughs> ml tywin only you cleanse the buff if you get buffed right from your mm-hmm. team, if I remember correctly, and then it's like, oh, if you have the effect resist, now you're not getting cleansed. Am I remembering? Am I remembering that correctly? Wait, say that again. Like ML Taiwan's uh, passive. ML Taiwan S two. It's S two. When he gets hit, he cleanses. Is, is yeah, it has, it's two condition though. It's he has to get it. It must be him to get hits, right? Yeah, he. Yeah. And has the to second get condition, hit. it has a cooldown. Is it get yep. hit or is it once per turn? Is it's it get hit or is it get debuffed? I thought it was debuffed. Get a, no, attack, it gets just attack. Oh, get just, hit. Oh, just get hit. Okay, just okay. Like okay. I, I'm gonna read it right now. So, 
It has a 100% chance to debuff if you max Mola to dispel one debuff from all allies when the caster is debuffed after being attacked. So, oh, see, see, wait, wait. So, after, so after the caster has been debuffed, after so if he's at not debuffed, then he won't cleanse? Oh, damn. Then he will not cleanse. So, that's like Champion Zerata, yep. right? Yes. Yes. So, but that's with what, a different condition. Yeah, it's... Yes, that, yeah. That's what scares me is because it's so conditional now that uh -huh. effect resist and like um, other stuff like that is yeah. going to like screw you over if you even want to try to use him. Mm -hmm. I think the line of thought that Smilegate has had when they were crafting this unit was to like um, sort of synergize with the skill one because he has that extremely high provoke chance. Yeah. Yep. Um, and provoke definitely is um, a very highly valued debuff mm -hmm. in yep. RTA just in general right because mm -hmm. um, unlike in Guild Wars and Arena where you're using the AI and abusing that to um, manipulate and your form of provoke you don't have to bring it right because AI dome um, but it's very valuable against people mm -hmm. I kind of want his S3 to have a silence as well just because that's a lot, dude. Slow, <laughs> that's wait, a lot wait, 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 wait. Uh, slow debuff. That's pretty crippling. Unhealable. Uh, this is like dizzy level <laughs> Silence. now. Silence. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, give it to him. Next so, thing. so, so burn S three over and over and over. Whoa. Oh, oh, Next it, thing no, you're gonna tell no, me, you're on no, his no, skill no. three to do damage. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's say I mean, he has to do something, right? He has. He basically doesn't have an ability against a player, right? If you're fighting a player opponent. He basically doesn't have S2. True. I mean, it's arguable because then he does have a Provoke again. Uh, like, unless... Yeah, like, yeah, like... Mm. I'm really curious, like, okay, uh, granted, I'm not... I'm not gonna be pulling for him, I don't think, right away. I'm gonna see what the next uh -huh. Mystic is. But, I I'm curious. I will probably see someone. Now, someone's gonna build it, someone's gonna get it six-starred. I heard Solera's going for it either way. Well, Solera's doing Solera. So, like, yeah. He loves this kind of stuff. He, he'll test it for us, right? We'll wait and see how he thinks of it. <laughs> and we know he has good gear to test. So I'm okay with that. And he has the gold. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so we wait. We, we revisit this next time after he's tested. And maybe we'll bring him on the next podcast and he can tell us about his thoughts. <laughs> Does he have the Mola? Because I really want another Mola pack right now. Oh, dude, don't worry, same It takes here. forever. Oh. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Everyone already know that my Orbit of Voodoo is plus zero Mola, so they never ban him anymore. Oh, wait, what's that? Really? <laughs> and I can't use him as a bait anymore. Everyone's oh, like, hey... Plus zero Mocha, what? Next time I this fight This is zero you. Mola Orbit of Voodoo. I, I know what to yeah, do plus. then next time. Is yeah, RB... but... My RB is like... I built him really, really well, I think. He's just zero Mola. That's the thing. Well, but then. because it's zero mola, we're not scared. Of yeah, him. that's the thing. He's zero mola, so you won't ban him anyway. <laughs> you just right. let him throw because he does no damage. Yeah. Oh, all right. So we can go off topic for a little bit. Um, maybe for a couple minutes here. If Chad has any questions specifically you guys want to ask, feel free. You know, take us. Um, take us in chat. We'll go over a few questions than that. We'll see what you guys think. Hmm. His life recruiting. His <laughs> life recruiting. There it is. <laughs> and we are always recruiting, like, actually. Um, God, how long is your pet? ML Tywin can counter Dizzy with Abyssal Crown when she comes in RTA. Dizzy has... He, he only cleanses one debuff. debuff. Yeah, yeah, I don't understand one. that. He only, ha he only cleanses one. <laughs> yeah, no, yep. no, no. It's, it's a good counter, right? You cleanse the stun, you get screwed by the rest. Easy. Just, just bring other cleansers. Bring yeah, cleansers with <laughs> Dizzy has like 600 counters, true. Mm -hmm. If Dizzy yeah. comes, my Violet will rise again. Oh god. <laughs> true. <laughs> Do you think that because uh -huh. the meta is so ML heavy, there are some fire units that are worth taking another look at? Well, mostly um, I force my Violet into a lot of my team comps just because I like to play him. I don't think he's that <laughs> ideal to pick. Hmm. Like, I can only surprise someone with the Violet once, right? After they already fought me once, they just ban him. And they leave the Zero Mola RB away. And they just fight the Zero Mola RB. <laughs> that, that's, that's just called unfortunate at that point. Should have never revealed yes. that. 
<laughs> it doesn't matter anymore. Mola Pack is next week. Oh god. Oh. I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming back. God. <clears throat> uh fire units though, like like what other fire units can we get? like Lydica, Tenebria that don't aren't really Sermia. Used? I mean, Sermia, Sermia, oh yeah, I don't yeah, Sermia is used. Double twenty five percent. Counter secret size Sermia. It's yeah. fun. Hongio, damn it. Hongio. Yeah. Hongio. Um, oh, oh Hongio, we love him. Counter. Yeah. I mean, he's literally my scythe. kryptonite. Right. <laughs> I play a violet. He plays a counter Sermia. What the fuck can I do? <laughs> I do. Counter Sermia with Sigurd. You're just not like, wait. With Sigurd, with the 25% chance to proc an additional turn um, on skill one. Ugh. And if it kills, so if it kills the unit with the first hit, it will continue to proc on a random unit after that. Wait, really? Which is amazing. Yeah. 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 yeah it's it like will, Charles. It will. Wait. Attack. Yeah. Just wait. It's the same how Charles. Like Charles has this really stupid thing, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. If he yeah. if he hits S one yeah. to an ammo can, and then he dies, he and he has a revive buff from Make Glory, he'll come back and still use S two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't because know so the 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. The second that exclusive art, uh, equipment thing appeared, Hongi's like, oh, oh I gotta check. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know. He, he, loves, same he loves his counter sets. Oh um, but yeah, no, Sermia, Sermia's fine. Like, amazing. Um, and like the speed Sermia shit was kind of annoying too. The 220 speed Sermia. Yeah. That no one expects. That somehow quits my DA. <laughs> and one shot her. Okay. I, I don't know how that works, but it was a 50 50 play, but I'll take it. Yeah, that was a like, good play. Okay. I deserve the lose. Dude, I'm never trust 50 50s, dude. Not in like. Dude, the 50 50. Dude, crit dude. resistance on DN, I swear to God. Just... No, no, she outspeed my DA and one shot her, so that's the thing. Oh. I so mean, hey, my that DA was a power move, speed, And somehow just, <laughs> yeah, it's a giant power move. Just, just blame it on speed RNG and call it a day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. No, but yeah. like, um, like, that ties back into the conversation we had previously about, like, the ease of use and uh, how many places you can use that unit, right? Same thing, like, Sermia, I think, um, for me, I use Sermia all the time um, mm -hmm. before... The flat stat change yeah. patch. That's when I stopped using Sermia and Guild War because all of a sudden I was concerned with um, how much is enough to one shot. So yeah. I immediately shifted to Wonder Shuri. Yeah. Um, but Sermia, I think, came back in full, full force in Guild Wars. Especially around with the, the exclusive. Time when, yeah. With the exclusives too. But when Lilius came out and people started experimenting with the relatively strong Lilius, Violet, Assassin, Coley team. Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, the discovery of the Sermia, Esesakades, um, Fighter Maya teams, mm -hmm. um, it just made you know Sermia like the best again, which is great for me because <coughs> Sermia is my waifu, hundred oh, percent. Very cool. nice. I heard about that one a lot. Contrary to popular belief, my waifu is not Gunther. Um, uh huh. Two hundred K. What was it? Two hundred K CP. No, I had a 198k CP Gunther, oh, and when the Monday. ego fra <laughs> when the ego fragments came out, I thought that the ego fragments would give me extra CP. So the very first ego fragment we got, I right. ego fragmented my Gunther, and right. my entire gun left with me. <laughs> right, I remember uh, that. Yeah, Wait, I mean honestly, I think the ego fragment should affect your CP because the imprint really move should. Your CP that you can use in the world boss to cheese some stuff right yeah. or I like mean, the easy good, sss but, but and i honestly just it should just display on the stat page it really yeah, should thought, display on the stat i thought it would have but uh that's I'll, what i thought too and then i then i used it and lost an ego fragment yeah <laughs> that's okay no it's okay rip also can i go talk about the self imprint for a bit sure yeah we yeah. can talk about that yeah it's a thousand eight hundred dollars for half your sword your armor flat stats it's not worth it. Why am I doing this? Wait, sorry, come again? Wait, what? Uh, for like SSS? Oh. SSS? It's like oh. $1,800. For like half your sword flat stat, two hard attack. Or like half your helm flat stat. Those are fine, but the only imprint that's kind of annoying is the crit chance, effectiveness, and effect resistance one. The crit chance is insane. Like, yeah, because crit chance has a cap, right? Yeah. yeah. 
So that's why it's kind of bullshit to have Christian Simpri. Like, I'm not going to lie. <clears throat> I slated my Charles. <laughs> oh, yes. Everyone. I think that's a, I, I I think that's a good move. Like, yeah. I feel like most people. At least people... the first imprint. Yeah, mm-hmm. like exactly. Like if anything, at least get that five point six. You get five point six percent crit chance. That's just like a sub stat. Oh, it's literally a roll. Yeah. It's like the um, in the past, people would always like, oh, save save your sl- sl- slates for Vildred, right? Green yeah. Vildred, yeah, because yeah, mm-hmm. you know speed imprint and all that stuff. Yeah. And now we realize, you know, Green Vildred isn't exactly that usable now. Um, I mean, ever since the self imprints, like he finally fell off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he fell off because <laughs> let's, let's be real. He fell off because then it's like the MLs got buffed. The, like like RB just got also buffed. True. Like boom, dead. Yeah. Yes. God replaced. Yeah. <laughs> Green villains also prophecies were true. Um, <laughs> Eska, why don't why do you think I attacked your Basque with my Green Vildred? Um, oh, but, uh, yeah, story. Like... Oh, no. <laughs> repeating the storyline. Oh god. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I no. said this already. I used Kron Vildred against his Basque. Anyway, oh. um, like uh, one of our guildmates, uh, Teal, um, mm-hmm. literally quit because of the self imprints. He thought that really? it was a bad direction to take. Like when I feel there like was the self imprints might have been a little bit too strong. Like I'm glad. Okay, so I'm glad about one thing in self imprints is that there's no one with a self speed imprint. Yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I feel like they they should have or they could nerf the crit chance self imprint a little bit because i think like a triple s charles gives like what 15 percent crit or is it more Something no it's like more that. 17 17 17 yeah like 16.8 yeah yeah i don't have an sss charles yeah i don't have no, like, no, no. 16.8 percent that's if you think about that in terms of like normally you're rolling a gear substat right it's more than a crit set like Literally. that's so much crit chance on a unit and like, let's say, like Assassin Coley, Assassin Sid, these two fast units that you know you want to build them fast, you're gonna be hungry looking for crit chance. Triple S four star units, they get fifteen percent crit chance, which is already a lot. Same as a more than a crit set still. So I feel like the crit imprint, self imprint, might be a little bit too strong right now, possibly in that situation, which is the. But the rest, I feel like, is is okay still. Yeah, I mean, I when we're but I, I suppose. But when I start thinking about like A. Coley and like her issue before and like A. Sid before, they uh, they always had that problem where you couldn't gear them properly. Mm-hmm. Where you want to gear them up fast, but then they do no damage. Then <sighs> you want to make them do damage and you're not so fast. <laughs> And then you, it, it's hard to compensate for both, right? I guess, and then yeah. when when you start when when you start complaining about like. The self imprints for like a five star unit, however, it's like, I mean, like Eska said, uh, I mean, if someone actually spent one point eight k just to beat me for like having that crit chance, sure, why not? That's that's, that's, that's like one point eight k, right? You win. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, you forget it's, though. It's, it's kind of insane. I mean, forget yeah. Namdolf didn't have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Nam always had a no, 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 Come on, dude. <laughs> it's like you're you're reminding me that I have like a freaking max out justice for all. Like max oh ammo. God. Wait, you have a max justice for all? Yeah, it's like eleven max limit break. What God, no, literally okay. when I was trying to pull for Charles, I literally pulled. It was during his Mystic Banner. Right? Like there was like a mystic banner. I forgot what unit, what MO unit was at the time. Yeah. But there was Charles. He finally appeared in Mystic. First time. I pulled like three justice for alls. I gave up. Oh no. <laughs> Throwback. So Throwback to one. And of the after world. that, it kept on haunting me over and over <laughs> until I summoned it while sleeping with Gabe. Hey, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Okay, we don't talk about this. What? All right. <laughs> what What happened at TwitchCon? Oh, excuse me. What happened at TwitchCon Excuse stays me. at TwitchCon, guys. Monka S. Lee? Oh, Monka S. Monka W. Yeah. Jim. Oh, <laughs> I man. actually debuted my uh, Justice for All Fallen Cecilia in that Trap House War. I don't Wait. know if you remember, Pan. Yeah, we pulled Trap House like a decent while ago in the season. It was two times ago. And yeah. Wait, Justice Fallen for Cecilia. All on Fallen Cecilia? How did that work mm-hmm. out? I won. It was like a justice for all little bit thing. I needed more damage, and I'm like, and um, 
it was like made Chloe SSB something and I just little betted it. And then I wanted, since we were on a time crunch at the yeah. time, uh, I just wanted to make it faster. So I put justice for all on Paul and Cecilia instead. <laughs> what? Okay. It worked. Okay. It worked. Interesting. <laughs> I don't, that, oh, I didn't know about this. Wow. <laughs> okay. It didn't do anything. It, it didn't need to happen. It just maybe, maybe saved five seconds. The RNG, I guess the RNG was probably fun. Like, oh, look what I got this time. Plug you. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, know, but yeah. I'll leave it there. I think uh, that was a pretty good podcast. So, uh, all right. Thank you guys for joining me today. Yeah, Pantry, uh, Tiber, Code, and uh, especially Code for staying up so damn late for this. He's, he's going back to Ark Knights. No, no, no. Yes. No, 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 no. I, I have some. Cool. I just had some coffee and a bar of Kit Kat. You know how much cool. power I have right now? Cool. 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 Go to bed, bro. Cool. <laughs> yo, yo, his, yo, if you go to sleep now, his schedule is screwed. You Please. Know. Oh, God. Get, I'm on break. Already it's fine. To do as long as I don't <laughs> die tomorrow, it's fine. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching today uh, in chat. Thank you guys for uh, joining me on the podcast also. And we'll probably try to do the we'll probably try to do these more often. Um, I'm gonna try to get these back started up at least maybe like bi weekly, hopefully. Um, just to you know, constantly talk more about the game in general, you know, maybe random other topics that might be a little bit more obscure, people don't really think about. Just kind of thing. So <laughs> Yeah. Alright. Thank you guys for watching and uh peace out. Life is recruiting. Hey! <laughs> <laughs>